Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. That's right, you know what day it is. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. And I pray you brothers and sisters join me every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events channel, where I will be reading your kind and inspirational letters, also thanking you for your kind donations, and also covering very important biblical information for the mental well-being of our 12 tribes. That's right, 12 tribes worldwide. So hope to see you then every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom, most high Christ blessed, most high Christ blessed. All praise to the Father. To the topics, to the topic is the fruits of feminism, especially in the black community, because all this stuff, it don't affect nobody but us, the black Hispanics and the Native American. So today we are going to touch the fruits of feminism. So first of all, first of all, men and women are not the same at all. That's why I want all the sisters to know. Because a lot of times, sister, way of living in the world, a lot of times, sometimes that behavior comes in the truth, thinking men and women are the same. First of all, I just want to put that out there. Men and women are not the same. They was built differently. They have different rule on this earth. Totally different rule. Totally different rule. So first, we're going to start Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. I just want to put that out there because a lot of sisters them, they'll disrespect their husband because they think all of them are the same. It's 100%, 50-50 in the household. You got different role as a woman and your husband have a different role on earth. Everybody was created for a different reason, for a different reason. We want to go into it today. The fruits of feminism, if it's good for the community, what have it done and what is it doing to our community right now? We're going to go into that. Isaiah 34, read verse 16. Book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. Read that one more time. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. See, this is the only place we can find the truth, this Bible. That's why the God is telling us, seek ye out of the book of the law, which is this Bible, and read. Anything we need answer to is in this Bible. We cannot go nowhere else. We cannot go nowhere else. We cannot try our ways. Now, nah, our way have been what? Unprofitable to us. So now, the Lord is telling us to do what? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. See, that's, that's what we got to do. That's what we have to do. Black men, uh, Hispanic men, Native American men, and black women, Hispanic women, and Native American uh, women. Read. No one of these shall fail. Uh-huh. None shall want her mate. You cannot compare the Bible to nothing else. No other book. Come on. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. See that? So the guy is commanding us to seek out of the book of the law. Because this is the book of the law. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 44, Moses gave the children of Israel laws to keep. That's why now he's telling us, seek ye out of the book of the law, which is the Bible, and read, and read. And that's what we're going to do tonight, and read the scripture, the Bible, and see the fruits of feminism. If it's good or if it's bad, we're going to go into that. Let's go to Romans 3. Romans 3, read verse 3. Because a lot of sisters, them, they have them behavior in them. They have that behavior. They have, they want to be the alpha. But that's not of the Lord. And we're going to touch that. Come on. Hey, real, real quick. Go ahead. Real quick. Uh, sisters, if you're having a problem right now, letting Satan get on you with what just been brought out, you have the devil on you. Telling you straight. If you got an attitude right now, Saying, oh Lord, here we go. 
You have the devil on you. Please hearken and listen. Get correction. Build your spirits up in the spirit of Christ. That's what this class is about. Go ahead, off. Oh, praise to the Father. If, if anybody complaining, that's, that, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hey, let's go read uh, all prison officer, officer in the spirit. All prison, you, you just said that. Read Romans 3 and verse 3. The book of <laughs> Romans, chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. For what if some did not believe? You see that? What if some are mad at the word that's coming out? What if some did not believe? Come on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Sure, what they're saying? Oh, uh oh. With me again, they all with me again. So whatsoever you saying, make what we bringing out non effect. Come on, God forbid. What? God forbid. You see that? God forbid. Come on. Yea, let God be true. Let who be true? Let God be true. Uh huh. But every man a liar. So that's what we're going to we're going to bring. We're going to bring the scripture. Let let God be true. Let every man a liar. Read that one more time for our sisters. Because whenever the topic come out, a lot of sisters, they get uncomfortable. They, 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 uh, they get mad. They say we always bashing women. No. We are about order, structure. The scripture say in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. That's all we do. We put in things in order as the law have already set it up. The problem of the war is they want everybody to do what they want to do. But we, the prophet of the law, it's our job to make sure we put it in order. Women, this is a rule. You got to play your role. Men, this is a rule. You got to play your role. Simple. That's what we have to do. Read up from the top again. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? What if some don't believe? Have an attitude. Come on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Uh-huh. God forbid. God forbid. You can be a stubborn, rebellious sister. At the end, you're going to be put to death. It is what it is. That's it. It's your chance to hark in and be safe. Come on. Yay. Let God be true. We're going to allow God to be true because he's always true. Come on. But every man a liar. You see that? Every man a liar. Every man a liar. That's it on there? No, sir. Come on. As it is written... That thou mightest be justified uh -huh. in thy sayings, Read. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. You see that? Now let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four, read verse three. The book of Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three. Come on. But if our gospel be hid, if our gospel be hid, all the understanding that coming out from our bishops. Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawsa, Bishop Canal, the deacons, the uh, captains, the high-ranking officer. If this gospel be hid, come on. It is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. To the stubborn, the rebellious, the hard-headed. It is hid to them that are lost. It's that simple. The, the Bible is very busy. Very busy. But for, for, for a rebellious person, it's complicated because they want to do their will and not the Lord's will. That's the problem. That's their problem. Read that one more time. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Uh -huh. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It's that simple. If everything that's coming out, you, not, you don't agree with it, it's because you're lost. Because you're wicked. Because it wasn't meant for you. It is that simple. It is that simple. And at the beginning, I make a statement. I said that men and women are not the same. They're not on the same. Uh, they all don't have the same obligation. They're on the earth for a different reason. They have different, different roles. They have different roles. So if you're a sister, you're married, you got to respect your husband. You got to know that his job on earth is totally different from yours. Don't try to see him and think both of you are the same because you are not the same. You are not the same at all. And after the class, I pray, maybe it will be clear that you sisters will understand that your husband and you are not the same at all. At all. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 1, verse 26. 
Genesis 1 and verse 26. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Uh -huh. And God said, let us make man in our image. In our image. Now he's dealing with man. He said, let us make man in our image. Come on. After our likeness. See that? After our likeness. What that tells you? Your husband is on a God level. He's not, he's not common man. But you don't respect him. You look at him uh, anyhow you want. The black man, Hispanic man, the African American man, they're on a different level on earth. But we have to keep God's laws, though. We have to keep God's laws. Women got to understand that. You and your husband is not on the same. They're, you're not the same at all. They're not the same. Come on. And let them have dominion over the fish uh -huh. of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle. Check this out. And over all the earth. Read that part one more time. And over all the earth. You hear that? And over all the earth. Last time I tricked, women is on the earth, right? What did you just say one more time? <laughs> and over all the earth. Read it from the top. Now our sister hear that. Because last time I checked, women are on earth. And God is giving me, the Lord is giving us the uh, He giving the, the, the power. He giving Adam uh, the job of a man. That's what he's displaying right now. He giving that. And check that out. Read that one more time. Genesis 1 verse 26. Uh -huh. Let us make man in our image. Read. After our likeness. Come on. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. You see that? He just, that's the name of the animals. Men should have dominion over all of them. But check this out, come on. And over the cattle. Uh-huh. And over all the earth. And over all the earth. That's the most important thing. That's thing heavy. All the earth. Women is on earth. So your, your man supposed to have dominion over you. So you have to humble down. You have to humble down. This is not a hit to us women. No. This is war right act. What wrong act? That's what all we do. We put the things in order. That's it. Cause things have been out of order since the wicked have uh, uh, hold control of the earth. Things have been out of order. This is the beginning. The beginning, the very beginning. God want men to have dominion over all the earth. All the earth. Women are not. They're not out of the earth. They're in the earth. So therefore, men have dominion over you. Read 26 one more time so it can sink in. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You see that? That's that's man, that's the power that man holds. Everything. Everything. The whole earth. The whole earth. Now I go to chapter 2. Read verse 7. We're going to go little by little. So that the sister can actually understand. And some of the weak men. That I think they and the wife is the same. They can understand that too. Because the Lord said the weak man. She's put up that weak nature. Put up that weak nature. You see any man that's following feminism. That's weak self men. Weak self men that got oh uh, that got denied by a woman in the world. So now he want revenge. So he's no 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 no. That's all those men. All those men that behind feminism, feminism, all weak and soft men. Because we won't go into it. God is not soft. God is not soft. He want us to be like him. We the men of the, this earth. We the overseers of this earth. But because of sin, we lost our path. We lost our path. And the so-called white men, our women cleave to them and take their philosophy, take their wisdom. And now our women come back in the house thinking everything is 50-50. That's, that's madness. That's confusion. Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. See that? And breathed into his nostrils. Let's touch that, that, that breath real quick. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 verse 10. Let's touch that real quick. Because with, with God giving men all that dominion, 
He have to give men laws too, with that dominion to control the whole earth, to control the whole earth. So let's go examine that, that verb. Oh, uh, Ezekiel 37, read verse 10. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. Uh-huh. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. See that? And the breath came into them. See that? I say, I prophesied. So when somebody prophesied, they're using the Bible. That's why the scripture says, Seek ye out of the book of the law and read. You see, I prophesied using God's words. And breath came into them and do what? And they live. And they live. Same thing with Adam. And he lived. As he had dominion over the world. So God gave him that laws, that commandments. So he can be able to what? Rule and control and teach the woman to come. Because she wasn't around at that time yet. I pray everybody follow. Read that one more time. Ezekiel 37 verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. Uh -huh. And they lived. And they lived. Come on. And stood up upon their feet. And stood up upon their feet. What's the story of Proverbs 10, 28? The man that wandered after the way of understanding shall remain the congregation of that. Let's read that real quick. Let's read that. God says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they live. So it wasn't living. So what so so what allowed you to live? What allowed you to live? You got that? Yes, sir. Come on. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Where you find understanding at? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Come on. Shall remain. In the congregation of the dead. See that should remain in the congregation of the dead. That's what in uh, uh, Ezekiel it says. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. So we were among the congregation of the dead. We wasn't living. We wasn't living. We was doing our own thing. Finish, finish, proverb real quick. Proverbs chapter twenty one verse sixteen. Uh huh. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. See, that shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So what are they telling you? God's laws. God's law will bring you to life. It will bring you to life. So let's finish Ezekiel real quick, then we'll go back to Genesis. Ezekiel 37, verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came in, and the breath came into them, and they lived. See that? And they lived, come on. And stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. You see that? The law. The law. Because of the law, that's why you see a exceeding great army in the making. That's why you see that, because of the law. So let's go back to Genesis. Actually, go to Proverbs 7 and 2. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. We own the, the, uh, the birth God gave to man. Because he had dominion over all the earth, so... It wouldn't make sense to give him what? The laws. So he can be able to teach, teach his wife to be, his wife to come. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Keep my commandments and live. You see that? Keep my commandments and live. And live. And live. Let's go to uh, Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 3, read verse 5. So as we find out that the law, the law will allow us to live. God gave Adam the laws, the laws to keep, the laws to teach his wife, his wife. Come on. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. And God gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands. Uh -huh. And this breathed into him. The breath of life. You see that? The breath of life. That's what Proverbs 7 and 2 said. Keep my laws and live. Come on. And he was made living before thee. Read. And thou leadest him into paradise, uh -huh. which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Read. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. You see that? Unto him. Unto him that gave a commandments. Unto him that gave a commandments. Because what? He was to what? To rule the whole earth. Let's go back to Genesis. Read 1 and 26 one more time. 
the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 uh -huh. and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea that dominion that dominion that power that authority that's overseers over the earth come on and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth see that and over all the earth and he gave him laws so he can have dominion so he can control everything over the earth everything and to put his wife in order because she will soon be coming because it's just him that he she will soon be coming you understand so now where we at go to uh <coughs> proverb set uh, not proverb go to two and seven genesis two and seven the book of genesis chapter two and verse seven uh -huh. and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. See that? And man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. So same chapter, read verse 18. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And we, we, I just, we in the beginning. We in the beginning of where everything started. Where everything started. Because what? Isaiah 34 verse 16 tells you that. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And read. You can't compare nothing else to this Bible. Nothing else. That's why he wants us to read this scripture. That's why we go back to the beginning to see where everything started. The order, the structure that God has created for men and women because they have different rules. They have different uh, agenda on earth. Their agenda is not the same. They have different agenda. And as we go in slowly, I pray, sisters, they are understanding that. I understand that because you have a lot of sisters that know precept, but they can't even respect their husband at home because they have that feminine mindset in them, in them, and that feminine mindset got to come out. It have to come out. It have to. No other precept and not apply is unprofitable to you, sis, unprofitable to you. Your husband don't have to remind you over and over and over and over to respect him. If your husband is reminding you to respect him, it's like the uh, the sixties and the fifties when our our fathers them were saying, "I am a man." He might as well wear that I am a man shirt in the house so you can take him as a man. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. You got to see God in your husband because he was made in God's image when you wasn't around yet. When you wasn't around yet. But a Western woman or the Westernized women, they are Negro women. No, uh, how you call it? The uh, Negro Pian women. They take they take their, their father, white man, custom, and then they take that into them, and now they don't respect their husband. Now they think everything is 50-50. That's out of order. That's out of order. have a lot of sisters that's in the truth having that feminine mindset. Feminine mindset. They're bossing their husband at home. Some, lead, some, some leaders talk in meetings. When you hear them talking, you know their wife is talking. <laughs> Stop being bugged out. You know men want to talk. You know, men want to talking for their wife because their wife being the feminist movement in the house. So once she tell him something and then he come out on the meeting and then he want to talk on the meeting. Come on, man. Come on. Then we're done. We hear all this stuff. You got to put up the weak nature and set your wife in order. Also, can I got something to say? No, I'm just going to add on that. You said something heavy. Um, that, that wives knowing scriptures but disrespecting their Lord at home. Remember, when Christ was fastened in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to him with scriptures. Right. All right? Satan, uh, uh, Christ is the Lord of all. Even the angels are submitted to Christ. So Satan was disrespecting the Lord Jesus Christ. So remember, the devil knows scriptures too. That don't mean you in the truth. That don't mean you right. Go ahead, Lord. Hey, that's it. You got some sister be quoting scripture, but respect 101, you don't give it to the husband. Respect 101, you don't give it to the husband. You think you don't have that feminine mindset? It's there. You think it's not there, but it is there. I'm telling you, it is there. That's why you got to examine yourself. You got to examine yourself. You watch TV, you hear me, you, you uh, listen to music. All the music, video, TV, all the propaganda that Esau put out is all to promote feminism in the, in the women's mind. That's it. To distract our, our women, to distract the black, Hispanic, and Native American women. But they don't want to examine themselves. They don't want to examine themselves. 
What we at? Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. See, this is before the woman come on the scene, right? God already set up all the plans. He said, man go have dominion over all the earth. I gave him my laws to keep, to teach whoever I'm going to obey after this. Because Adam have dominion already. He gave him dominion. They gave him laws to keep. So Adam already had, you know, his rule. Now come the black woman coming. Come bring it out. I will make him and help meet. Or what? And help meet. You see that? Help me. That thing's simple. Or help me. Come on. For him. See that? Not for herself, but for him. Plain English. Not for herself, but for him. Read that one more time. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. Uh huh. I will make him and help meet for him. Come on. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. Read, 20, read 21. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God taken had taken from man. See, that, that's how women wasn't even there yet. They wasn't even there yet. In, they wasn't in existing at all. They wasn't there yet at all. Come on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. You see that? Made him a woman. Look at your name. Woman. Woman. Taken out of man. That's your name. Your name even have a, a difference in it. Your, your name have a submission in it. Me. Woman. It's like uh, somebody. Some, uh, the IUSC already have the rules, regulation, everything, right? And then a new member come and they want to do their own thing. That's how it's like. It's like you have a root, your roots in your house, everything. And then a stranger come, they want to change stuff. That's the same with women. Everything was in place. Everything was in place. There's no problem. There's no problem. But when the, the, the sister that come on the scene, it's drama. Because what? You got to modify your members. You got to you gotta know the structure. You got to know the order that is set from the beginning. Come on, off. Yeah, off. Well, read, uh, hold, hold where you at, but go back over to 26, 1 and 26. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So right here, we have the first level, the top level of man being in the image of God. Now read 22. Verse uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 22. Verse 22. And the Lord, and the, I'm sorry, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. From who? From man. From, the, from Adam, the God of the earth. Read. Made he a woman. Made a what? A woman. Now understand, that's another level. All right? Man was made in the likeness of God. Women, y'all's glory is of man. There's no 50-50 in that. It's two different levels. Two different levels. Man from the likeness of God, out of God's image. Woman from man. That's how God put it in order. And if you hate that, you hating God. He's the one that set this order up. Go ahead, off. That's it. That's it. He set it up. He set it up. And that's what we read earlier. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. That's it. That's it. It's basic. It's basic. And we read earlier too, what if some did not believe? Should an unbelief make any of this not effect? Oh, no, 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 no. God forbid. It's just you that would die. That's it. Come on. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Brought her to what? Unto the man. Why did they set her on her own? 
<laughs> and brought her to the man. Because he got a job to do. What job does she have to do? Read verse 18. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will do what? I will make him and help me. I will make him a help me. You see that up? And go not to uh, 22. It'll help me. Now she's she's here now. Read 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Uh huh. And brought her unto the man. See that? Because she is a help me. That's busy. <laughs> Go yes. Ahead. Uh, help me, my sisters, not a ruler. And you men, you brothers, if you let your wife rule and run over you, you are out of order also. Simp. A uh, simp. Because the wife is not a ruler over the man. She's a help me. For you, period. That's it. That's it. Why, when she went, or the Lord made it, or uh, made a woman? Why he he didn't take I don't take him to her? Right. He said, "Come on, come go see your wife." Right. No, take her to him, cause he's the God. Cause he is the he's the God on earth. He have all the dominion. But now the the so called white man. You turn everything upside down. So our, our sister them, following their lust, that dominion they want to have, they run into it. Like a zombie, run into it. Now they cause a problem in the black and Hispanics and Native American community. Because of you. You don't want to follow your proper role. Because of you. But all praises, all praises, we're going to turn that around by the word. That's what the scripture is seeking out of the book of the Lord and read. Last sisters to have that masculine uh, behavior. Sometimes we'll be going back and forth with the Lord, arguing. When he says something, she says something too. Say something, say something too. It's like going back to back, like two commentators. Back to back, back to back, until she has the last saying, and then there's peace. If she don't have the last saying, there's no peace. And you tell me, your daughter, Sarah, come on, spare me. Read 22 again. And the read which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Come on. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Who named her? Who named the woman? Who named the woman? The man. Because he has dominion over everything. <laughs> Read that thing one more time. <laughs> and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. That's a black man talking, Adam. That's a black man talking. Maybe some of your sister and guy or uh, white men in the heart, in the mind. But it's a black man talking. What the black man said? And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. Read. She shall be called woman. Your name was given by a man. Your name was given to you by a man. What did I say? That's should we even stop the mic? Turn off the mic and just go. I think that's it. <laughs> Seriously. Because who named us? Our parents named us. They have that dominion over us. We didn't name ourselves. Yet your husband naming you. We have fallen. We have fallen. We have fallen so low. And it's a shame. It is a shame. That's what uh, Hosea 14, read Hosea 14 verse 1 real quick. We'll come back. Hosea chapter 14, read verse 1. We are ready falling because the Lord make it plain from the beginning. Plain. But why are our sisters confused? Because they envy their person. They want to be like the, uh, the other nation. They take the look at the, the white man as their father. As their father. What's your philosophy? He said what's the thing he, planned, he put out. Our sisters didn't gravitate to that. Go run to that like a zombie and they bring power in the home and they bring power in the community as a whole because what they, they bear offspring that's going to be just like them. Come on, the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 1. Read, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. That's all we have to do now. We got to return to the Lord. Come on, for thou has fallen. You see that we have fallen. A man that name you, now you look at your husband in the house, you tell him he ain't no good. Someone says to cuss their husband out. Someone says to suck their teeth at their husband. 
We have fallen. We have fallen. Come on. By thine iniquity. That's the same to disrespect your husband. It's the same. It's the same to disrespect your husband. It's that simple. Let's go back. Let's go back. 23. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Come on. Because she was taken out of man. That's the definition of your name. But you were taken out of man. Man was in existence before even you come around. Before you even come around. That's why your name means woman. Woman. Pretty simple. Come on. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And this marriage, just going to the marriage, this first marriage. Once she came out, that's the first marriage right there. Come on. And they were both naked, the man and his wife. It was both naked, meaning that it was free from sin. It was free from sin until what? Until chapter 3. It was both naked, come on. And were not ashamed. It was not ashamed because when you read chapter 3, going down, they were ashamed because of the sin. But here it was free from sin. That's why they was not a shame. It was not a shame. So from there, let's go to Tobit 8 and 6. Tobit 8 and 6. And the sisters don't like, like, like uh, to be here and stuff like this. It's good. It's good medicine. Even if you, you're, uh, you're submissive, you're nice, you're diligent wife, you still got work to do. Because I, I don't see no sister 100%. 100%. No, no, no. I don't see some. Y'all see some? No. Officer oh, so Kinesi, you see some? No. I don't see some yet. I don't see some yet. Seriously. So, you got, sister got work to do. You got work to do. Seriously. Got work to do. Because the same way we all came over here on slave ship, same way we're going to get out of here. But you got to get your mind right. Then get your mind right with the Lord said. A lot of women going to be put to death here. So you got to get your mind right. Don't think because you ain't bought all blue fringes or hair up. You think you, you already got your past, the, the kingdom of heaven. No, 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 no. Don't deceive yourself. Read Tobit 8 and 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 8 and verse 6. Come on. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. See that? For a helper and a stay. Helper and a stay. Come on. Of them. Came mankind. That's why multiply, multiply. Come on. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. That's why women came in the picture. Without man, women won't be here. Without man, women won't be here. Women won't be here. That's why them foolish uh, brothers, them with that foolish brothers and foolish sister, without uh, women's God nonsense doctrine. Nah. <laughs> why should they name herself if women's a God? Why should they name herself? She said, oh, she, said oh, she was subject to Adam. No, 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 don't name me. I think this name would be better for me. <laughs> she was her name herself, but she didn't. You got some? Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad you said that. That comedic doctrine, hey, sisters, that is only to get in y'all's draws. That's it. To blow y'all's head up. That's all that's about. That's it. Come on. Let us make unto him and help her. I'm sorry. Let us make unto him and aid like unto himself. See that? Like unto himself. Like unto himself. So now let's review the dominion God gave to, to men on earth. Let's review some of that. I review some of that. Because some of the sisters be thinking the dominion God gave to men don't pertain it don't pertain to them. It's not for them. Like I said last time I checked, the Lord gave men dominion over all the earth. And women live on earth. So that applies to you. Men have dominion over you. I don't care what a white man tells you. I don't care what your white friends tell you. Men have a dominion over you. Over you. Let God be true. Let everybody a liar. It's that simple. It's that simple. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go back to refresh our memories on Genesis 1 and 26 real quick. We're going to go step by step real slow. The class going to be long, but I pray is edified. Genesis 1, reverse 26, real quick. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, 
and over all the earth. Over all the earth. That's that part right there. Dominion over all the earth. So if you reside on earth, man have dominion over you. That's it. That's it. Unless you, the, the white man is your God, then man don't have dominion over you. But if you reside on earth, man have dominion over you. And every sister need to take a, a moment or silent and just swallow that pill. Seriously. Just gotta swallow that pill nice with a nice cup of water. Swallow it so it can digest. Because as you, like I say, as long as you reside on earth, men have dominion over you. You want to be stubborn and uh, stiff neck? It's to your detriment. It's to your detriment. It's that simple. You got something? It's to your detriment. So from there, go to Genesis 3 and verse 6. Dang. 3 verse 16. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 16. Come on. Unto the woman he said. This is to the woman now, come on. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. See that? Thy desire shall be to thy husband. See that? Your desire shall be to your husband. Husband, that's that dominion that men have over the earth. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. You see that? And he shall rule over you. And he shall rule over you. Because God gave him laws. So he's going to rule over you according to what? Knowledge. Because God gave him laws to have that dominion over you. So he's going to. How are you going to rule over you with that laws, with that knowledge? I, I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear. Let's go to Numbers 30 real quick. Numbers 30. Reverse 4 first. Numbers 30, reverse 4. The book of Numbers, chapter 30 and verse 4. Come on. And her father hear her vow. And this is the dominion we go into. We're still focusing on the dominion. Come on. Because we have fallen from that. We have fallen. The black woman, not think the black man have any uh, dominion over her. She do whatever she want. She curse him out. He said, do this. She do her own thing. He said, uh, wash the dishes, do that. He won't come out from work. The dishes stay in the sink. You'll say, oh, vacuum the place, do that. Come back. The place all out of order. Black woman don't have no respect for her husband. To have respect at all. Do not have any respect. Any respect should be uh, talking back. All that. That's that's feminism. Feminism. That's all that. That's, that's the root. That's where it came from. That's the fruit of it. The fruit of it is in our community. The fruit of it is in our house today. That's the fruit of it. Women talking about women sucking the teeth. Women cussing their men out. That's the fruit of feminism on our women now. Still living our women. And the women got to repent from that. You have to repent from that. Come on. And her father hear her vow. See that one that was a woman vow, vow, pray. And her father hear it. Come on. And her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul. And her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand. See that if a sister uh, vowing a vow to the Lord or praying. And then her father on her father's roof. Her father hold his peace. Uh, after hearing her and hold his peace. Everything will stay. What she said, she said will stay. Because woman is always on a man. It's always on a man. When you when you living under your father's roof, you over you he's over you. And then when you get married, your husband is over you. From the from the beginning until now. And that's it. Nothing changed. God don't change. Come on. And every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Come on. But if her father disallow her. So her father hear the vow and disallow, say, no, I don't agree with that. She, she, she's praying amiss or she vowing foolishness. Come on. In the day that he heareth, uh -huh. not any of her vows or her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. If he disallow, it's not going to stand. That's that dominion. That's that dominion. God give to men. That's that dominion. Pay attention, sisters. Come on. And the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. See that? Come on. 
And if she had at all any husband, when she vowed or uttered out, or out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it. So now it's her husband. So because when a, a sister is in her father's house, she gonna marry and then she honor her husband. So now he's just dressing her husband now. If she vowed a vow and her husband yeah, it, come on. And held his peace. And hold his peace, come on. At her in the day that he heard it. Come on. Then her vow shall stand. It will stand, come on. And her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. Read. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it. See if he disallowed when when he hear it, that day he hear it, he disallow it, come on. Then he then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect. See that? None effect. None effect. That's that I tell you sisters. You got to start to respect the men on earth. You have to. You got to start to respect the men on earth. And not just ordinary men. Especially the men that's in this truth. Keeping God's laws that you're married to. You got to respect them. You have to. Seriously. Because if you're not doing that, you're digging hole for yourself. God kills stubborn women. If the man is righteous, God will kill the stubborn woman. It's the, it's, it is what it is. God don't, be, God don't play games like that. You know your role, you got to play your role. If you know your role and you don't want to play your role, that's a problem for you. That's a problem for you. It's that simple. That is a problem for you. Men always have dominion. Not the weak men that want the parts to be peaceful. He's going to keep his mouth short and allow you to eat food over his head. Nah. Nah. Because God is not like that. God command. So men need to command his wife. And want to prove that. We people here and be like, oh, nah, 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 nah. It's all women, manpower, manpower. Nah, nah, nah. This is all law, statutes, commandments. The, the order that the law has set in place. This is what we are revealing. Because the law says, seek you out of the book of the law and read. This is what we are reading. We're not adding and subtracting nothing. It is what it is. That's what we're bringing out. Dove save the law. That's what we are bringing out. It's either you will hear or forbear. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. Let's go to uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter uh, 18. Let's check out, let's check out uh, Abraham real quick. Let's check out the forefather. Because men always have that, that, dom that, that dominion. 18, read verse 19. The book of Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. For I know him. See that? For I know him. Come on. That he will command. See that? He will command. Because he already know he have dominion. He have dominion already. So he's not going to or negotiate. He's not going to do that. He will command. No 50-50. No 50-50. He's command. God said, for I know him that he will command his children. Come on. And... His household after him. That's it. He set the rules. You follow him as he followed Christ. It's that simple. He's not following you like a simp. He's not uh, following anything you say. That's why you go, yeah, yes, 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 man. Yes, uh, uh, yes, yes, babe. That's a simp. That's a simp. God don't want no simp in his army. There's an army. This is not a play play. This is not a play church. There's an army. Sister need to be in the place, in the rightful formation, in the place, which is what to help and be a help me to her husband. That's it. How hard is that? How hard is that? Well, because you put your mind on the Esau philosophy, on the so-called white man philosophy, you stop doing your role as a woman. You stop doing your role as a woman because you was taken out of men. You was brought to men. Men gave you that name. Your desires to be to your men. But now it's changed. Now it have changed. It have changed because we have fallen. And our sister get mad whenever this, this topic come out. Because you got a devil on you. That's it. Because you have the devil on you. That's why you get offended. That's why you get uncomfortable when this problem come out. When this issue is, is addressed. That's why you get the devil on you. That's it. But you want to get mad? Continue to get mad. It is what it is. We're not your pastor to sugar to put sugar around your mouth. Nah, we're gonna give you the better medicine because we know it's gonna save your life. 
It will save your life. Then read 19 one more time. Verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. You see that? After him. Now, a weak man in the house, a woman says something, and then he come on a uh, uh, meeting and come speak for his wife. That's Sam. That's Sam. You think this, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the men of the Lord is not going to peep that? Of course going to peep that. Because you listen to your wife. Whatever she whisper in your ear, that's what you come, you, you, you talk. It's like you're talking for your wife now. That's, 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 that's some weird stuff. Some men, you call them uh, Officer Sarah now. When they're going to call it, they'll be, be the office of Sarah. It, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Bringing everything that wife say on the table. And you know damn well, that's not how you talk. Yeah, swallow the pill and get better. Swallow the pill and get better. Because the Lord don't want nobody to listen to their wife and uh, bring their wife opinion to a men meeting. Because you are simp. That's what God tells Abraham, for I know him. For I know him. He don't know you because you don't come in your household. He do not know you because you are a sim to your wife. Because you are a sim. You're a proud feminist gentleman. Go ahead, Elf. Yes, yes. That, that is hitting the nail right on the head. And also flip side with that, since we're on your brothers right now in this verse... Uh, read, read it again, Of The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children mm -hmm. and his household after him. Now, for you brothers, if you are lost and don't know how to command your household, we about to read how our forefather Abraham and many of our forefathers written in this book of the law commanded their households. Read on. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. That's not by your fists. That's not by your cruel words. That's not using your wife as a doormat. Right, right, right. That's not sitting your wife up on a pedestal being a simp. A prophet, an Israelite man, commands his households through the laws of God. That's right. Period. Go ahead, off. That's it. That is exactly... Hey, read, read that one more time, just for the t on the top. Read that one more time. For I know him. For I know him, come on. That he will command. He will command. That's dominion. That's dominion. That's man. That's man's job to command. Maybe, be, oh, no, no, no. Let's see that. Because Christ said, uh, let us make us, uh, they make us be in our own image, right? In our own image, right? You see, so he can do what we do, have that that or uh, that same that same uh, characteristic, make a, a God on earth, pretty much, make a God on earth, give him dominion to uh, to control everything that that's working and breathing on earth. That's that power. So a man's supposed to what uh, command. It's not supposed to what uh, negotiate with a weaker vessel, the weakest vessel. How would a man negotiate with a weaker vessel? That don't make sense. That don't make sense at all. That do not. So let's go to uh, Psalms 33 verse 8. Psalms 33. See, our, our Lord command. He command as well. So if you're a son of God, you got you to gotta, you gotta learn his work. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of men, they're in that weak nature. They want, they, they're in that weak nature. They can command their wife. They can, do, they can uh, deal with their wife according to knowledge. Psalms 33, read you verse, start at 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 8. Come on. Let all the earth fear the Lord. See that? Fear the Lord. Come on. <laughs> Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Come on. For he spake. For he spake. Come on. And it was done. It was done. That's it. When a man speak in his house, get it done. That's it. Bring that thing again. That thing powerful, man. For he spake. For he spake, come on. And it was done. It was done. Says when I come back, please, oh, oh. Let the dish be clean. Let the house be clean. Oh, let the house smell good. Oh, let us freaking say some real song. And put a class on, watch class while I, while I, while I go on as well. It got to be done. It have to be done. No, but, 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 negotiating. No, 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 no. Read that thing. That scripture is powerful. I like that. 
For he spake. Read verse 8 again. Psalm 33 and 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Come on. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Read. For he spake. For he spake. Come on. And it was done. It was done. Come on. He commanded. He did what? He commanded. That's what Abraham took down for him. He commanded his house to. He said, for he commanded. Come on. And it stood fast. That's it. How hard is that? Come on, ladies. I know you're listening. Get it done. Leave that feminist movement alone. Leave that alone. Romans 12 and verse 2 say, Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Your mind got to change to God's mind. And God's mind is you being in subjection to your Lord. As he is in subjection to, the most, to Christ and the Most High God. It's that simple. You got to read that scripture one more time, man. My, my bad, boy. I love the scripture. I'm telling you. The scripture is powerful, man. Psalm 33 and 8. Come on. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Read. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Come on. For he spake. He spake. A lot of times when men speak in the house, six of them don't be paying attention. They don't be paying attention. They don't even care. What he said, it says, I need this done, this done, this done. When you come back, they give the guy a lot of reason why it wasn't done. Oh, baby was crying. I got to feed the baby. Oh, I, I took a break. I didn't even know it was that long. And then two hours passed. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. You are not playing your role, sis. Do your part. We come to camp one-on-one. -on -one. We pay the bills in the house. We all go out to teach our people. We're doing our part. God said, go out to the highway and the edges. We're doing our part. What are you doing? Do the least by honoring your husband. Do the least. That's the least. That's the least you can do. Come on, sisters. And then on the, on the marriage group, when you post a video, everybody can say, oh, our presence, oh, our presence. You know damn well you ain't doing it at home. I'm telling you, man. Everybody responding. Oh, That's right. oh, oh, say that again. Everybody got gifts, gifts for, <laughs> for something. But you know damn well you are not doing that to your Lord. I can bet on it. Nine out of ten. Eight out of ten. Maybe seven out of ten. Let me take it off. Ten out of ten. You might not even be doing it to your Lord. But you pretend. But your Lord in the same group. So he know you. He keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Off. <laughs> nah, you you right on. You right on. Uh, just stop faking the funk. Get in the spirit of Christ. Be real with yourself first. What what is this? Saint Corinthians thirteen five. Correct. Examine yourselves. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Seek you out a book of the Lord and read, please, brothers and sisters. And that's it. That's it. God will start to, to respect your Lord because he was made in God image. Come on. In God image. They said they all, what they said, they said, let all the earth fear the Lord. Your husband was made in that Lord image. The same Lord that the whole earth feared, he was made in that image. But if you don't believe that, then you will not respect him. So we deal with a lot of unbelievers. That's what it is. That's what it is. Unbeliever. But fronting, playing games, like the belief. Oh, powerful video. Oh, I like this quote. I think this is it. But he's not, he not learning from me, though. He's not learning from me. That's why not the manager of say, law, law, law. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because you're playing, faking the phone. Read chapter 9 again. I'll let it be. <laughs> For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. You see, you see that? He commanded. So the same brothers, the weak brothers, need to command, need to get your, uh, go that, have that uh, dominion in your house. But according to knowledge, your wife is not your domain. Deal with her according to knowledge, because God gave Adam the laws, the knowledge, to what? Uh, to deal with his wife that was coming, which is Eve. So you men got to deal with them according to knowledge. And they got to what? Respect and reverence you. When you say something, when you command something, you got to get it done in his. Give me that scripture about Judas. I can't remember. Judith, uh, Judith said, uh, you in the spirit, all praises. Whatever you're reading, a brother said, he got you, I mean, you in the spirit. When the brother say, ah, he doesn't even pay attention to the whole thing. I'm telling you, man. When the brother say, I got you, he's in the spirit. 
I think it's you know, the book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Bring that thing out. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now? Why you think she said, Who am I? Why she think she said that, Who am I? Because she, what? Her mind ran on memory lane. She went back to the beginning. Man was created, or oh, the women were created for the man. Man named the woman. The woman was brought to the man. The man have dominion over everything that's on the earth. So uh, Judah have, uh, she, her mind went back to memory lane. She started to meditate, so to think. A lot of sister, you talk before you think. You got to think before you talk. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? See that, who am I that I should gainsay my Lord? Who am I now that I should gainsay? Gainsay is going against. Your Lord command you to do something, you go against it. That's game say. That's out of order. That's out of order. Game say is going against doing your own thing. Self will. It's all that. Come on. Surely whatsoever pleaseth him. Look at that thing. That thing is nice. Whatsoever thing pleases him. Who men can raise their hands and my wife do that at the house every day? No, 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 no. Some they good, some they bad. Some day more, your wife will be nice as hell. Bring, bring, bring your food. Some day she will come. She will even talk to you. She will put the food down. And then she go. Like, dang, girl. What's going on? Come on. She, she won't say nothing. She will put her food down. And then she go. So how you doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better open your mouth and speak. I'm telling you, man. Can't make this stuff up. Because we have fallen. We have fallen. If you don't go through this, hit the comment and then let me know. Then maybe you got a pure wife. Maybe you got a pure wife. Maybe you got a pure wife. <laughs> Read it one more time. Surely, whatsoever pleaseth him. Whatsoever thing pleases him, come on. I will do <laughs> speedily. Is what? I will do speedily. See that? Speedily. Speedily. Quick. As soon as possible. That's that thing. Speedily. Our, our sister mind is not there. No, no, no. They're not there. Because when you correct them in the house, they bring your food different way now. They don't smile. They don't talk. They just bring your food, bring your water. You go back to sit down. Right there. No love. No love for you. No love for the food. This stuff crazy. This stuff crazy. I'm telling y'all, this stuff crazy, man. Sister already got to come back. Come back. Seriously. Come back. When your Lord corrects you, you still got to act the same. You still got to act the same. Still love him. Because he care for you. That's why he correct you. Don't have that, that, that wicked mindset to say, oh, that dude uh, correct me. And uh, I'm going to disrespect him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find my face. Nah. Your face shows what's in your mind. Your face, your continent, show what's in your mind. So when your blood correct you, and then now you bring him for you, I know, uh, he sees, your, your man, if your husband is spiritual, you're going to see all that. You're going to see all that. Don't try to please yourself, please the Lord. Because what, you wasn't made for yourself. You was made for the man. That's it. Without a man, there will be no way, man. That's it. So you got to understand that your desire should be to your husband. And Judith is telling you, making this plan for our sister in 2021. She's saying that what's the right things or her or what's the right things? Read that thing again. I don't want to boost up it. Surely whatsoever pleases him. Whatsoever pleases him. Whatsoever please. Don't the, we do whatsoever please, Lord. The Lord, the Lord commanded us to do things, we do it. So you gotta do the same thing to your to your to your husband. To your husband, that's why in the, in the uh, New Testament, uh, in Luke, uh, it say, Why call me law, law, and not do what I say? Why call your law, Lord? Just the, just the name alone. Some sisters will be happy to say, My Lord. <laughs> oh, my Lord. My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> Give me this stuff up. My Lord. Say uh, on their Facebook name. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> It's so crazy, man. 
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Nah, they, you know, a lot of sisters just do that for, for show off purposes. That's it. That's it. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Show off purposes. Y'all don't mean it. That's it. I'm telling you. Really? Why? Read that verse again. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? So our, for, our foremother, Judith, gave you sisters... One step. The first step is not to gainsay your Lord. Right. And I guarantee you, in the houses in this truth, that happens. Read. Surely, whatsoever pleaseth him, I will do speedily. Number two. Whatsoever pleases your husband, Judith says, sisters, do it speedily. I guarantee you. That's not happening in this truth with our sisters. Guarantee. Read. And it shall be my joy. And it shall what? It shall be my joy. And be happy and joyful in doing it? That's right. I guarantee you that's not happening 100%. Read. Unto the day of my death. Oh, our sisters ain't thinking that far. Trust me, our sisters ain't thinking that far. Our sisters can't get through the day. You understand? So like we said, sisters, y'all got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Get out of that feminist, masculine mindset that Esau has set forth in the earth. It is going to destroy and kill you. Go ahead, off. That's it. Because she said, she said that, and it shall be my joy. My joy. See that? My joy. Good or bad, it will be her joy to what? To please her Lord. Not herself. Not herself. Until what? Until the day of her death. It's very important, sis. We gotta, y'all, y'all gotta come back. Seriously. Y'all have to come back. Y'all ready for them. Y'all, be, y'all stop playing the, 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 the front thing, the oh, I want to look good stuff. That's the privacy kind of mindset. The clean outside the cup and inside the cup is dirty. That's don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you're doing that, you, you just like the Pharisees. And that's unprofitable to you. And when when is that and when it's unprofitable to you, it's gonna lead to death. That's it. You gotta stop doing that. You gotta stop doing that. So from there, let's let's go to the book. Let's go to the book. We're gonna, we're gonna read some stuff. We're gonna take uh take a look. At the fruit of feminism, the religion of the murder day of black woman. Some of it is if all the stuff we uh that's why we read first, we read all the scriptures. So this is going to some of the things our women outside the world do and some of the hard headed women that's in the truth still do today. So if the uh if it's you, that's fine. Just get it get it right. Get it right. But let's see what this brother is saying. What's the uh What's the book name? The book uh, Negro Negro War, Negro Wars. I see a short and critical examination of the modern day black woman that destroy you of the black community in the course of the up and coming civil battle. And uh, the the, uh, the author is Bab Tune Baba Tune. That's the author. So. Off, go to page, uh, page 22. Page 22. A look at the fruits of feminism, the religion of the modern day black woman. First, uh, start with feminism. Feminism, though it claims to support women, in turn, actuality demonizes, demonizes women for exercising their natural desire to want to serve men. You see that thing? <laughs> read, it, read it all one more time. Feminism, though it claims to support women, in turn actually demonizes women for exercising their natural desire to want to serve men, nurture and raise healthy and happy offspring. So go to the next one. You see that? Because it, now it, uh, it don't want... Feminism, it promotes women not... Wanting to play their role. That's it. Women not wanting to play their role. And when you're a feminist well, woman, you are, you disrespect your husband because you think he's not supposed to be over you. So you're in the house, but you're not ready, you don't really believe 
in what God is set up as the order of the house. Because your mind is on feminism. You see that? Come on. In reality. Actually, I don't want to read that. Read, read feminism. It's uh, the other paragraph. Feminism is a completely dysfunctional religion in that it seeks to remove both men and women from their default functional role. You see that? And we just read all that. It removed the man from his role, the simp, and they removed the woman from her role. Now she, she think everything is 100, 100, 100 uh, 50, 50% now. Come on. Feminism is a completely dysfunctional religion in that it seeks to remove both man and woman from their default functional roles in nature. The man being the leader. Being a what? The man being the leader. See that? Come on. And the woman being the follower and submitting to him. See that? That's what in the Bible. That's what in the Bible. So go to uh, page 23. P page 23. That's what we read the Bible first. Because let God be true. You understand? We read the Bible where first to give the understanding. And then we'll see what this book saying. Because what the book saying is going along with the Bible. It's going along with the Bible. Come on. The highlighted part. Feminism has told women that they can perform the same task as men. Which is to, to preach to preach in the uh, to preach in the church. To do the same task as uh, as the men. That's what's going on. The whole world's turned upside down with white men philosophy. Come on. The fact of the matter is this notion is complete and utter rubbish. See that? Read. Men and women are built differently to fulfill different functions and roles, especially when involved in relationships. Uh -huh. The feminist ideology seeks to turn women into men. Seeks to do what? Turn women into men. You see that? Come on. And to a certain degree, this feat has been successful. Women today have become much more aggressive and violent. See that? Become aggressive. I suppose see some women that be punching their husband. Some women that will take pain and throw it at their husband. That's this stuff, that's what the, the, the brother go into. That's what in our black community, what the feminist movement have done for us, that's the, that's the fruit of it. That's the fruit of it. Our women are very aggressive and violent. Violent. Some women be talking like men. Come on. Women today have become much more aggressive and violent. Traits that were hardly on the radar with the women of the 1950s and 60s. See that? At that time, they was rather submissive. They was by behind their, their husband. They was at the house, taking care of the children, being a wife. Nah, it's not like that, 2021. It's not like that. Because they, they have that indoctrination in their mind. In their mind. Let's, uh, let's hold what you got. Let's go to Titus, Titus chapter 2. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Because this, this is what our women should be. Titus chapter 2, read verse 3. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. See that? The women, as older women, especially the older women, got to be teacher of good things. You can't be caught up in the gossip. You can't be caught up in the disrespecting your husband. Because you got to be that example for the younger sister. That's how it got to be. Come on. That they may teach the young women to be sober. See that? So when you got yourself in order as an older woman, you got to teach the young women how to what? Be sober. Uh -huh. To love their husband. To love their husband. Now it's not like that. You have a lot of single parents because they didn't love their husband. They blame the man for everything. They blame the man for everything. They think they don't, they, they don't know wrong. That's why you got a lot of single mothers. Because they blame the man for everything. Everything. Always on the defensive. They cannot get right because you try to build them up, try to correct them. They, they don't want to accept it. They don't want to accept it at all. Come on. To love their children. To be discreet. To love the children and to be discreet. Come on. Chaste. Keepers at home. See that? Teach the young women how to stay at home and not be in the street all the time. Come on. Good. Uh huh. Obedient to their own husbands. Obedience to their own husband. How are you going to teach another sister to be obedient to your hus to their husband if you are not obedient to your own husband? Last sister, year officer, or hypocrite. 
Because you cannot teach somebody to be obedient to their, to their husband. Why? You yourself, you're not obedient to your own husband. That's a hypocrite. And some of you are hypocrite. Period. Come on. That the word of God be not blasphemed. See that? That the word of God be not blasphemed. You have to teach young women to be what? To what? To, to be obedient. So you got to be obedient first. You have to be obedient. Let's go back to the book. Let's go back. Let's go back on page 23. We'll be going to the book and going to scripture. If anybody desires to view the fruits of feminism in their full glory, look no further than the black community. Do what? If anybody desires to view the fruits of feminism in their full glory, look no further than the black community. Uh-huh. The black community because of its women fully taking on board this philosophy has become a complete basket case. You see that? Because our women fully took that, that philosophy. You took that daily. Come on. Western and westernized black women, for the most part, look masculine and behave more masculine than black men. You see that? Behave more masculine than the black men. That's why some men run, run away from women. Which is out of order, but the root, all the, the root to it is that what the feminism, our system, you gotta remove their mind from that. You gotta come back to who you are and come back to your role as a woman. Come on. Black women deliberately go out of their way to emasculate and feminize black men in order to continue retaining their position as leaders. As what? As leaders. See that thing? The black woman is the leader in the community. Let's, let's get that in Isaiah 3 and 12. Mm -mm -mm. That's a black woman for you. They're the leader in the community. That's why we will be walking, you'll be, you know, go walking in circles. Walking in circle. 3 and verse 12, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. You see that? Women rule over them. That's what this book is going to. Women rule over them. Come on. Oh my people, they which lead thee. They which lead thee. Them women that lead the, the community. Come on. Cause thee to err. See that? Cause them to err. How did a woman lead the community? Because we're a lot of single parent household. So once she give birth, once she have a, a the, the child she's raising, she's misleading that child. She's messed leading that child in a what, feminine mindset. So when that child grow up now, it's all messed up. That child don't have a right mind, but all princes to the most high God. There is laws that the prophet is going out to the street and teaching. And you sister that's in the body need to hawk him. That need to hawk him, really need to hawk him. Seriously. And, and uh, get rid of that feminine mindset. That's it on that? No, sir. Come on. And destroy the way of thy path. See that? And destroy the way of the path. Go to Nahum 3. Nahum 3, reverse 13. Because women, women, be, women ruining every, everything nowadays. And that's why our sisters don't want to do the same thing in this truth. They want to do the same thing in this truth. Two husband tell them to do something? No, 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 no. I'm not going to do it. You can come back and do it. You come back and see the dishes still dirty. See the place stay out of order. She on the phone though. Come on. The book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 13. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. Are what? Are women. You see that? They, they be controlling the stuff. They be controlling stuff. Come on. In the gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. See that? Whenever women control, whenever women control things, the other nation can do anything they want to do. Because that's the wicked vessel. And that's what the white men do. Use the woman. Destroy the community by the woman. And she thinks you know what she's doing. You no, know you don't know what you're doing. You follow your, your father, the, uh, the, the so-called white man. So-called white man. Let's go back to the article. Yeah, real, real quick with the article since we're going back. Uh, what we just read, it says, Black women deliberately 
go out their way to emasculate and feminize black men in order to continue retaining their their positions as leaders. That's what uh, Officer Joe was bringing out earlier about you simps in your households. Not only in our community, but also in our households. Okay? Um, what they're not doing as our, our foremother Judith brought out or what they should be doing and how they should be treating their husband, showing respect and honor to her husband, today is vice versa. Feminist rule in Babylon the Great. And that spirit is strong here. So it's easy, very easy for our women to get entrapped in that spirit, that ancient spirit of since Genesis. That feminist spirit is still strong today, and it's an old, ancient demon, okay? But this is going into your households, brothers, so beware. Yep. Get your balls back. Get them back. Be a man. Go ahead, off. Hey, that's it. That's it. Look, the black woman want to rule the black man. Want to rule the black man. She been, she been uh, trained, trained by the so-called white man. To what? To be feminist. So when she come into the truth, she married. Now she want to run him. Now she want to run him. Now she want to run him. And you men got to put your feet down and deal with your wife according to knowledge. And show her in the scripture that she got to submit. She got to submit. If she not submit, she's going to the way of destruction. That's it. That's good. There's start start of black women de deliberately. Black women deliberately go out of their way to emasculate and feminize black men in order to continue retaining their positions as leaders of the black community. Uh -huh. Black women, on the whole, have become extremely violent and aggressive. That's what some, some council you be hearing, sister that will be pushing and, and, and doing all kind of stuff to the Lord. That's not aggressive, that's all from feminist movement. Aggressive. Talking back, that's aggressive way. Women don't talk back. That's aggressive way, that's out of order. Talking back, that's a form of aggressive because what you can say, you're going against the order that's in the house. Come on. Black women, for the most part, have completely lost their nurturing instinct. See that? They lost their nurturing instinct. They don't even know how to take care of kids no more. They even know how to take care of the kids no more. That's that ostrich. Let's go to that in, in Job 39. They, they, they lost their nurturing instinct. Instinct should just pop, but they lost that thing. Come yeah, on. yeah, off. You just brought that out in Titus. Yep. That that's why that's why you said uh, a lot of our age women they can't teach that because they not doing it. They hypocrites. Right. They they not nurturing. They forgot how to nurture. Right. Go ahead. You on yeah, you on point. They forgot how to do that thing. And you know the black black woman they're too proud to say I don't know. They're too proud to learn all over again. They're too proud to do that thing. They lack, they are lost in nurturing instinct. They don't have that. It's lust. Let's go. Let's read that. Job 39, read verse, start of verse 13. The book of Job, chapter 39, and verse 13. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? Come on. Which leaveth her eggs in the earth. See that? Leave her, her eggs in the earth. Come on. And warmeth them in dust. Put in the warm them in the dust, come on. And forgotten that the foot may crush them. You see that? That's some that's some that's some that's our women lost their nurturing instinct. Sometimes I'll leave the kid in the house and just go. Sometimes uh, uh sister just leave the kid somewhere else and just go. Go. And people in the world do that too. Sister in the world do that all the time. Take the kids to grandma and then just go. That's that you don't have that nurturing instinct no more. You lost that. Now it's all about you, you, you. You worry about to get the next baby. And sister that you gotta care for the children. You can't come to the somebody looking good and then your your child looking all dirty looking, all stuff all in the eye. I've been seeing that too. Sister looking nice, all hair wrap nice. Make up pretty picture. But you see the kid, the kid all uh, looking out of order. Kid not clean. Because you forget. That nurturing instinct, you forget that. The kid is not clean, but you clean. And say, your mother, no, you're not. Let's finish that scripture. And forget if that the foot may crush them, uh -huh. or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened 
against her young one. See that? She's hard against her young one. She don't know. She forgot that. That 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 nurturing instinct. She fight. She forget that. She don't know how to take care of her children no more. Because she 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 what? She's following the so-called white man doctrine. That's why she forget that. She's following the feminist movement. That's why she forget that. She don't know how to be a wife no more. She don't know how to be a woman no more. Because woman mean taken out of men. You don't know how to be that no more. You lost that. Come on. As though they were not hers. She act like her child is not hers. Come here to stop your child looking dirty, looking clean. That's somebody gonna ask, is that your child? Come on. Come on. Read. Her labor is in vain. Sometimes hair hair not even did do, do good there. But your hair is on point. But your your daughter or your son hair is not on point. Come on. And you say you you come on. Good sister gotta do better. Gotta do better. This is not bashing sister, this is restoring sister back to where they used to be. Come on. Her labor is in vain without fear. Was in vain without fear. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go to the stream 23 black women for the most part. Read there. At the bottom. Yes, sir. Black women for the most part have completely lost their nurturing instincts. They hate children and more time when they have children. It is, it is simply to use them as a tool in order to claim state welfare and child support. Hey, mm -hmm. read, read, read that one more time slow. <laughs> Black women, for the most part, have completely lost their nurturing instincts. They hate children, and more time when they have children... And that's that ostrich. Ostrich hate children. Hate children, because she forget that her child is even there. She kill her own child. Kill her own child. It's all about her. 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 She want to go get another one, but she don't care about the one she got. Come on. Black women, for the most part, have completely lost their nurturing instincts. They hate children, and more time when they have children, it is simply to use them as a tool in order to claim state welfare and child support. That's it. That's it. That's why they, they, they push the men away. So they can get that. Sometimes they, even the, the men in the war will correct them. But because they're stubborn, they won't accept that. And they will kick the men out because of their pride-ness. Prior, prior to coming to the truth, a lot of sisters was like that. A man will correct them. And then they will be so proud and not take the correction and say, I don't want you. You lie. You this. They kick the man out. And then they take the warfare and sit home, single parents. Can't make this stuff up. Come on. This is the main reason why black women are so aggressive and harsh towards their children. And most of the time, however, they indoctrinate the child to believe that this type of mercilessness, hostility, is normal behavior. This thing that's normal. And then they teach the child to do the same. That's that Ezekiel, the teach the woman get there, the cheat, teach the child the same as the mother, so is the daughter. And the daughter come out doing the same, kicking her husband out. Come uh, read that, come on. He has the blue. Black women, namely single black mothers, are the principal corporate responsible for the war zone type. That corporate, that mean offender, offender, offender. It's a black woman, uh, namely, namely single black mothers are the principal corporate, which, which meaning is offender, offender responsible for the war zone type environment. War zone type, the black on black crime. The black on black crime. Black women are what? Or to be responsible for that. For that, but Christian black women don't want to hear that. They do not want to hear that at all. They do not want to hear that. Let's let's go. Let's read Second Edges real quick. Second Edges. Second Edges uh, five and eight. Because the, the, our, our black women love to to listen to the white men philosophy more than God 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 doctrine. Five and eight. Second Edges chapter five verse eight. There shall be a confusion. Also, in many places, 
and the fire shall be oft set out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. See, that shall bring forth monsters. That's that war zone. Black on black crime. That's that muster, uh, mysterious women bringing forth them kids. Them kids. And it's sad. It's sad. And then when you read Isaiah 51 uh, to 20, that's all them men, them birds, them out the street. Because of the single parent household. They're like wild boy. They're mad because their, their mom was mad at their, their, their dad. Sometimes it's hard for us to, to see their, their dad. So they don't have nothing to turn to but to be what? To what? To hit, the, hit their brothers, hit people that look like them. Because the mom created that environment, that warlike environment. I saw black kill black all the time. All the time. And it's a shame. It is a shame. Let's go back to the book. Let's uh, start uh, 24, start at uh, the uh, this, in this paragraph. It has only taken. Yes, it has only taken the modern day Western black woman 50 years to destroy the black community using the sledgehammer of feminism as per the instructions of her white liberal father, Lord, Savior, and Master. You see that? <laughs> she listened to the white man. What's her doctrine you bring? That's what she cleaves to. Because she don't want to be submissive to a Lord. When you tell a black woman about submission, she hit that thing. She hit it. Hit it. Did you see Beyond Clubhouse bringing out stuff about how the black woman uh, kill babies? How the black woman should submit. Black women hit submission to the black man. Hit submission. It's crazy. Come on. The modern day Western black woman has become the number one enemy of the black male and the black nation as a collective. You see that? She has become a number one enemy to the black man. That's Ezekiel. She has become a number one enemy to the black man. She hit her husband. Her husband comes, she mugging her husband in the house. That's why she don't respect the man. Her sister got to get get that feminine mindset out of the head. Let's, let's uh, read that. Ezekiel 16, 45. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, and verse 45. Thou art thy mother's daughter, thou that loatheth her husband. See that? You hit your husband, your mom hit her husband. She uh, run him, run him out of the house. So now it's saying that all oh, that mother's daughter that loaded her husband. She hit her husband. So that because you witnessed that happening, you learned that from her. That's the same thing. Come on. And her children. And her children, so like the ostrich. She hit her children too. She don't know how to care for her children. Same thing. Come on. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loatheth their husband. See that? Your sister hit her husband too. It's the same thing. It's generation. Generation. But if God's law can stop all that, if only our woman, our sister them can what? Can transform their mind to God's laws. And start cleaving to the white man philosophy, the feminist movement. You have no part in you have no part in it at all. Your job is to what? To do your part to serve your husband, to be submissive and bring down the bring back uh the second coming of Christ. Bring the kingdom. That's it. How hard it is to do that. Because you're proud, you only care about you, 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 you do everything to please you, but and as a result you destroy the black home. Do everything to please yourself, but destroy the black home. And then destroy the kids because kids don't have no father figures to look up to. Let's go back. Page 25. Come on. A large portion of feminists are homosexual. Lo and behold, it comes as no surprise how the feminist agenda and the agenda of the homosexual seem to align with one another. A lot of them in there. A lot of them in that movement. A lot of them in that movement. And Leviticus tells you, 1822 tells you, that last time you'll be put to death. You'll be put to death. Come on. Feminism hates masculinity and, femini and femininity exercised in their natural environments. Hence why feminism has encouraged women to take on the roles of men. You see that? To take on the roles of men. To be acting like what? To be acting like men. 
If you're acting like men, you will not take orders from men. That's it. If you're acting like men, you will not take orders from your husband. You do what you want to do because you, you want to be him. You don't want to be yourself. Come on. While at the same time, penalizing, ridiculing, and punishing men who who behave as true men ought to behave. You see that? <laughs> the feminist women hit men to, to get the ball back. They <laughs> hit that thing. When a man starts to stand up in the house, they hit that thing. Oh, he, he's, he's loud. He's always mad. No, he's not always mad. You need to keep quiet. And as long as he's not telling you to sin, what is the problem? What is the problem? He's not telling you to sin. But a lot of women that make that excuse, oh, he's always mad, he's always angry, he's always angry. That's your smoke screen. But it can only work for so long. For so long. So long. Because you hit men to what? To behave as true men ought to behave. Let's go to, oh, uh, let's go to 28. We, 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 we get in there. A little bit of reading, but we are, we're almost done. Come on. Women need to start learning their natural place once again. See that? You need to learn your natural place once again. Come on. It is only in that arena will they find fulfillment and, satisf and satisfaction in life. Women cannot run things. You see that? Women cannot run things. When we read uh, Genesis 18 and 19, Abraham commanded his house. The women wasn't commanding the house while Abraham was there. No. So they said, women cannot run things. That's biblical. That's biblical. Come on. As the saying goes, men build, women de decorate. Women decorate. Let's get that. <laughs> Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel, right? Let me see. Also, can you can talk. Let me look for it real quick. Yes, what we just bring it now. That thing did you. Read that. Read that last paragraph of women need to start. And read that for us okay. real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, what did you say? The last paragraph you just read, uh, women need to start learning. Yes, sir. Yes, women sir. need to start learning their natural places once again. It is only in that arena will they find fulfillment and satisfaction in life. Women cannot run things. Simply put, sisters, fall in the godly order. That's it. Fall in the godly order. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. That's the heavenly, godly order put in place to benefit you. As, as, as the brother is saying, that's where you're going to find your fulfillment and your satisfaction by playing the role, being in order as the Most High has placed you from the beginning. Go ahead. Off. That's it. And uh, page 26. It said that as the saying goes, men build, women dark rates. And that's what uh, Sirach saying right here. Come on, Sirach 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 16. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See that? In the order of her house. She got a dark rate. Dark rate. Men build. She decorates. She makes sure things is uh, in order. Things is nice and the house looking good. That's it. Let's go back to the article. We're almost done. we almost done. Come on. 28. Yes, sir. Start the simplest, yeah. As the saying goes, men build, women decorate. A woman's true purpose in life is to be a nurturer. See that? A nurturer. Come on. A person who is to aid the man. See that? Aid the man. That's what the, the scriptures say. Uh-huh. In keeping his lineage and his family tree in continuance. You see that? That's Titus 2. That's Titus 2. You gotta what? Be, you, got, you gotta do these things. That's what this book is going to. And that's what we read er, earlier. That's what we read. Come on. However, the feminist has performed a slap-up job of making a woman's natural functions seem weak, insufficient, insignificant, and inferior. Therefore, in their folly, many women now strive to compete with and match the performance of men instead of recognizing 
the vital importance of their ability to bring forth life. You see that, and that's that's what Genesis one and twenty eight tells you. The war tried to push that women prefer rule, being a submissive, wire bearing for children, taking care of your children. Women, people in the war push that. That is not good. So it make our sister them see that and be like, nah, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. I don't want to be. I don't want to be that. I'm not going to do what to do. I'm not going to do what this Bible said. Nah, but it's just a guy. Can't be like that. Can't be like that. Men always over things. Men always over the head. God set men up to do that. God set men up to do that. Come on. To nurture and to raise children. Okay, we almost done. Let's go to page thirty-eight. Page thirty-eight. Almost done. A woman can raise a son by herself. Not. Come on. That's pretty funny, man. It's not. Go ahead. The modern day Western black woman has been seriously duped by the white feminist movement and white and her white liberal slave master into believing that she can raise a boy by herself. See that? Come on. This cannot be done. And today we can clearly witness the cancerous fruits of the black woman's labor in attempting to raise boys without the involvement of the father. You see that? And that's what uh that's what we read when uh in Second Ezra, mistress women give give uh, birth to to monsters. They they are the ones robbing us. They don't want killing each other. Because of single parent household. That's it right there. Come on. You women who have sons and have decided to go get to to go it alone are uh, contributing toward the continued decaying and dysfunctional society that we have in ex existence today. It takes a man to raise a boy. That's it. Come on. Now, black women today love to complain about how there are no decent black men out there. Well, guess what? A large percentage of black men walking the planet today are the products of single mothers. There were no fathers in the home to raise the lads and to teach them how to to teach them how to be true men. Come on. Be be accountable and be responsible. Never forget that it was you, black woman, who first set this single mother ball rolling. You see that? No man to teach this children how to be a man. No man to teach the, 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 the male child how to be disciplined. How to be disciplined. Let's see, let's let's see the scripture. Let's go to first uh first king. It's very important. Male figure gotta be there. A black woman thinks she 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 got duped in this feminist movement, thinks she can do it all by herself. No man, we cannot do it all by yourself. Don't fool yourself. That's the reason why we're in the uh, uh, this condition that we're in. Black on black crime, you're part of it. That's the yeah, first thing. Yeah, and real quick, on this, sisters thinking that they, they, that they can do it on their own and raising boys. It's not millions upon millions of our brothers in the prison system. Right. You think that is all just wrongful accusations? Uh, uh, Esau just binding up a lot of brothers, putting them in. Nah, sisters. That's from your single family households. You being ahead. You have misled this whole community by following the devil. Go ahead. That's it. First Kings 2. The, the book of First Kings, chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. So, so, uh, so uh, David is telling his son, right? He's about to die. He's telling his son, I go the way of all the earth. About to die. Come on. Be thou strong, therefore. That's the importance of black men being in the house to God his children, to God his son. Uh, David is telling uh, his son, he said, be thou strong. Because his son, his son sees strong men. So he's advising him a son. That's what a father's supposed to be to, to the son. But when a woman is there, a woman gonna say that. A woman gonna say, be that strong. No, 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 no. 
That's confusion. That's confusion. Come on. And show thyself a man. Show yourself a man. Uh huh. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. If a father is in the house, the father will teach the kid how to be a man by applying God's laws. That's why it's important. A lot of black women say, well, I don't need a man. You don't need a man because you or you want to do what your father, your so-called white man, telling you to do. Come on. To walk in his ways. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You see that? That's why it's important to have a male figure in the house. It's very important. Now let's go to um, First Maccabees. It's important to have a male figure in the house to teach the kid. Teach the kid. A lot of women don't have no male figure in the house, but they're proud about that. They're proud about that. They're proud about that. And that's out of order. Super out of order. Super out of order. Let's read that. 2 and 49. First Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 49. We're almost done. Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now have pride and rebuke God in strength and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Now therefore, my son. See that father talking to his son, not mother talking to her son. It's always father uh, showing their son how to go. But a black woman today, she thinks that she don't need no man. That's the problem in our community. The feminist movement have destroyed us. Destroy us big time. Come on. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law. Oh, see that? A father teaching his son. Say, be zealous for the law. No matter what, be zealous for the law. Read. And give your lives for the covenant of your father. You see that? Only the father can do that. that, that. Only, uh, a child will what? will see his father and then see himself. It's very important. That's why a father needs to be in the household. In this truth, mother and the father. I understand a lot of sisters are single. I don't understand. But you gotta what? You gotta be, so, you gotta what? Be born again in your mind. So you can be that light. So lost will you get married, the men that you get married to can help your kids. Can help your kids. Come on. Call to remembrance. What acts our fathers did in their faith in their time, so shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. So from there, I don't want to read too much. Jump to uh, jump to. Give me to sixty-one. Verse sixty-one, and thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in Him shall be overcome. So this is a man's state of, of advising and giving his son's counsel. Come on. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, uh -huh. for his glory shall be dumb and worms. Uh -huh. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, uh -huh. because he is returned into his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Read. Wherefore, ye my sons, Come on. be valiant. See that he's telling his son to be valiant. Read. And show yourselves men. See that? He's telling his sons to show themselves men. Come on. In the behalf of the law. Only a father can do that. Train, that. train that child to be a man. To be a man. A woman cannot train a man to be a man because she don't know how to be a man because she's not a man. Only a man can do that. That's why now you ask you have the programs that uh, for the, the sisters and that that's, that have uh, sons, we have the program where the brothers them take them out, be around them, hang out with them, to, so they can so they can get trained how to be a man. God, women cannot train a man to be man. It's, it's it don't make sense. It cannot be. It cannot. He gonna take her her uh, emotionless and all that stuff that he's not supposed to have. He gonna take all that. Come on. Yeah, you go ahead. And I, and I hope. Uh, I know no sister in the truth is saying this, but it's it's commonly said in the world, our sister saying that they are mother and father. I, I got something for you. Go ahead, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something at the end. You gonna you gonna see something? Finish that real quick. For by it shall ye obtain glory. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. No, no, read read sixty four one more time, please. Sixty four. Wherefore, ye my sons, 
be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. You see that? Show yourself men on the behalf of the law. That's how you show yourself men. And the father can do that. A father can do that. And when we in the truth, uh, single parents, what? We are the fathers to the fatherless. We, we are the fathers to the father. They will have programs in place to help them young men. To help them young men. It's very important. So wife, uh, sister at the house got to play her part to make sure she show that the uh, children the right for example. The right for example as well. Let's go back to the book. I'm going to show you something. Let's go back to the book. Uh, start at 38. Mm, so, well, guess what? Besides this, a large portion of these men raised by single mothers saw different men passing through their mother's houses like a motel. You hear that thing? Yeah. That's that uh, must, mur, mustard's woman bring forth mustard. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then when you read Proverbs 7, I don't have too much time, so I don't want to go too much. When you read Proverbs 7, it said, met, then met him a, woman, uh, a holy. What she said to him, she said, come. Come, let's go and draw ourselves. Come, let's go. And some of the sisters that do that, they have children in the house that see all that is going on. When they see that, they what? They be like that same thing. And that's why you see, actually, they, 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 they both talk about it. Let's go ahead. And thus, they themselves have learned the same process of hit and run. See that thing? Learn the same process. Come on. Now, I have dealt with the claim most black women with children make that the father did not want to stick around. The fact of the matter is that most black women are liars. Sure, I do not deny that in a number of cases the father will duck and run. However, it seems that this is the convenient excuse that is used by the modern, modern day Western black women in the majority of cases, even though it is usually the woman who will open her legs to an irresponsible man to begin with, or if the father wants What Bishop say? Let's close Bible open, right? You say, man, no good. My baby father is no good. But you open your legs to him. Come on. Who will open her legs to an irresponsible man to begin with, or if the father wants to be involved in the child's life, she will typically prevent the man from seeing his children. See that? Come on. This is the common mode of operation for many black women who have children and who do not get along with the, the father. They are so consumed with emotions, pride, arrogance, and spite that they cannot keep themselves out of the equation when it comes down to the relationship between the father and his children. Therefore, in her eyes, the children must suffer. See that? That's, that's crazy. Read. And not see their father because of the way she feels and not for any legitimate cause. See that? And that's what plaguing in our society today. It's, 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 it's sad to read. This brother's on point. He's on point. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. Like sister, like, oh, the, the, the child father is no good, no good. Oh, so you're perfect, huh? You're perfect. You didn't do nothing. That's the last paragraph. Because of the stupidity of the modern-day Western black women with regards to her embracing single parenthood instead of being ashamed of it, many corporations have taken advantage of her performing, performance, performance position and have pushed forward products to cater towards black women and their delusion of grandeur. So I send you something. Check them 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 course. There's a there's some no course, right? Some uh give course. <laughs> the companies making fun of our wife, our women, our women today. Read them give court. Dad, you're the best mother there ever was. Yeah that thing? <laughs> give me this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. These are give courts. These are gift cards that company are making fun of our wife. And the sons are buying this gift cards, giving it to the single mom. What did, what a gift card read? Mom, you are the best dad ever. You see that thing? 
Stuff is sad, man. <laughs> this stuff is sad. Read that one more time, man. Can't make the stuff up, off. I'm telling you, cannot make it up. Read the card one more time, both of them. Mom, you are the best dad ever. <laughs> dad, you're the best mom. You're the best mother there ever was. Oh, why are you reading this thing? I'm speechless, man. This stuff is, is... Oh, man. We have falling. We have falling. That's why sisters should not take offense to this class. Just let's do better. Let's do better. Let's do better. We do not hate women. women. We promote uh, that women keep God's laws. That's all. We promote the order. Because our sisters are very beautiful. You got to what? Keep God's laws. Women have their part to play. It's in God's mission. They have their part to play. They have their part. Let's go Luke. Luke 8 and 2. I know some sisters of them are uh, not liking this class, but hey, it's the truth. It's not, it's not, not sometimes, but it is the truth. We're not going to tell a lie out here. We're not going to say what you want to hear. No, we're not this Christian pastor. Luke 8 and verse 2. The book of Luke, chapter 8 and verse 2. You got young men out in the world calling their, their mother's dad. You're the best dad I had. Dang. Come on. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Jonah, the wife of Uzziah, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. You see that? Sister have rules to play. They minister to Christ with their substance. Sister not just here to, nah, they have role. Every sisters have their role to play. They have their role. We just, as the prophet of the law, we, we read the self the law. That's, that's how it is. You, the role for women won't tell the women. The role for men won't tell the men. The men got to deal with the woman as according to the scripture with knowledge. That's it. We don't have sugar coat anything. Now let's go to Romans 16. Romans 16. Everything got to be done in order because we work, we all, uh, God is a man of, of order and structure. So therefore we have to what? Uh, start to apply and uh, set stuff in order. Romans chapter 16. Read verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 16 verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe. See that? That's a sister. Phoebe, come on. Our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Chichira. Come on. That ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she have need of you. For she have been a succor. See, succor means a person that help when somebody is in need. Sister don't have the job to do. They have a job. We're not bashing sister. Now we're setting things in order as Christ wanted to be. That's all we're doing. Come on. Of many and of myself also. See that she helped she helped Paul and she helped a lot of people. Like Paul says, she helped many people. We don't just hit women or no no no. We just selling things in order and we are we fall. We fall. Now we gotta come back. It's some the stuff was really sad stuff, ashamed stuff that we all should be ashamed of. Now we gotta ready to come back. It starts with a sister in this truth. To come to, to come back and realize that you gotta get your mind out of that feminine movement, that feminine will of life. Come on. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. See, all them sisters them was what? Were doing their rule, their rule. Their rule as according to the law. Read. Who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Read verse 6. Greet Mary. Who bestowed much labor on us. You see that? They got sisters them that was diligent. So sister them, you have to see them sister and pour in yourself after them. Not your own will, not the so-called white man doctrine. Gotta pour in yourself after the sisters. It's very important. It's very important. We love our sisters. We love our sister. We just promote order. That's it. We promote order. And those that those of the brother that's married, love their wife. Love their wife. That's it. Love their wife. Let's get that in Ephesians 5.25. We're almost done. You got to set some stuff clear. Because some people will listen to this and be like, Oh no, it's all about manpower. No, 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 no. It's not manpower. It's about order structure to set the black community up. 
the black Hispanics and Native American to set us back in order because we're not in order right now. We're not. You watch the news to see all kind of stuff going on, black on black crying, all that. That's out of order. Five and twenty-five. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-five. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. That's what we teach. That's what we teach. Husband to love their wife, but wife gotta stay in her place and respect the man. That's what we teach. Come on. And gave himself for it. See that the, the husband gotta protect the wife, gotta provide for the wife, gotta be there for the wife, cause that's his job. The same way Christ protected the church, well, Christ gave his life for the church. The man gotta do the same for his wife. It's order. It's order. We're just doing what God commanded us to do. So let's, let's go to First Peter three. First Peter chapter three verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. The same way the, the man got to love his wife, the woman got to play her role as well. Come on. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair. Don't be the sister that just care about you looking good all the time. Don't be, don't be the sister like that, that. You gotta be the cup that's clean on the inside and the outside. Your mind gotta be right, come on. And wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Come on. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. Your mind gotta be right, read. And that which is not corruptible. Your mind not gotta be corruptible. Your mind should not be corruptible, read. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. You see that? The, the book we just read that said black women have become violent. Violent. Without, we got to what? Sister got to instill that quiet spirit in them. That quiet spirit. Come on. Which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that thing? Great price. Keep reading. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also. Holy women. See how they call them women in the, in the scripture? Holy women, come on. Who trusted in God. See that, they trusted in God. So they do what God told them to do. They, they play that role perfectly fine because they trusted in God, come on. Adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. So if you're not in subjection to your own husband, you're not a holy woman. Because the holy woman was in subjection to their own husband. So if you're not doing that, you are not. Come on. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. See that? Abra uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord, meaning that she, Abraham was that authority over her. See that? Call him Lord. Come on. Whose daughters ye are. You are the daughter of Sarah, read. As long as ye do well. You are only the daughter of Sarah if you do well. But if you're not doing no well, you're not the daughter of Sarah. Come on. And are not afraid with any. Amazing. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. And men got to dwell with their wife according to knowledge, according to God's laws. Read. Giving honor unto the weaker vessel. Because the wife is the weaker vessel. It's like you're having a, a pot that's full of hole. When you put water in there, it's going to fall. It's going to keep leaking. So you got to keep putting knowledge into her. Keep putting knowledge into her. Keep dealing with her according to knowledge. Come on. And as being heirs together. Because of, both of you are one flesh. You are, you are heir together, read. Of the grace of life. Uh-huh. That your prayers be not hindered. You see that? That's what we teach in IURC. Brothers and sisters got to get their mind right. Sisters got to get take that or feminist mindset out of them. It's very important. And with that, I pray, sister, glean a little bit for this class. With that, you got some more? Yeah, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Uh... Off, get Luke 11, 27, 28. This one scripture real quick. It's had to come out. But see how, because uh, like, I made a statement that uh, this feminist spirit is an ancient demon, and it is. Christ dealt with the spirit also. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company Lifted up her voice. She did what? Lifted up her voice. Masculine, masculine, masculine. <laughs> she lifted up her voice. All right, speaking to the Messiah, read. And said unto him, 
Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. So she's a big time feminist, giving praise to what the women do. What? Just in their nurturing robes. That's what a woman's supposed to do, is nurture. But let's see what Christ say. Read. But he said, yea, rather. Yea, rather. Whatsoever. Yea, whatsoever. Okay. Read. Rather. Blessed are they. What? Blessed are they. Read. That hear the word of God and keep it. That keep the commandments of God that was given to Adam, who was made in the image of God. Okay? Back to the commandments that was given to man. So women, it says again, read 28 again for our sisters. But he said, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. That's your fulfillment and your satisfaction right there, sisters. Go ahead, Alpha. And our presence, you're the spirit of our person, most of our sisters. I pray you took something from this class. And with that, we say shalom. What sign could bless you all? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.